I'm Catherine Kraft. I'm curator at the Nasher Sculpture Center. And um, it's been my great pleasure to work with Tabitha Trolley and Xavier Edward Carter over these last months, many months now, yeah. uh, on this exhibition uh, in the public gallery that we're going to have a little discussion about the process of getting uh, this exhibition mounted and the works made. And then we're going to be going into the gallery afterwards for a conversation there. Uh, so let me just start by introducing um, our two artists, two of the members of the collective Empire of Dirt. Xavier Edward Carter is an interdisciplinary artist born in Dallas with a BFA from Stanford and an MFA from SMU. Um, in 2011, he was awarded an Arch and Ann Giles Kimbrough Fund from the Dallas Museum of Art and was a fellow at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in 2016, 2017. In 2019, Carter was awarded a postgraduate Dijon Dallas Exchange Fellowship and was included in the Nasher Sculpture Center's Nasher Windows 2020 exhibition series, which is how we met. And um, he has works in the collections of the Nasher and the DMA. He's exhibited in Vietnam, South Korea, Mexico, and France. He is currently the head artist and engineer of Goldfish Dreams, an artistic publication and production house based in Dallas, Texas. Um, Tabitha Trolley was born in Penn Philadelphia, and she makes functional ceramics and sculpture, as well as working in painting and photography. Along with a rich studio practice, Trolley has been an instructor of ceramics, sculpture, and three-dimensional design at the university level across North Texas. Currently, she teaches ceramics and manages the studio at the Creative Arts Center of Dallas. She received a BFA in ceramics at Temple University, uh, Tyler School of Art, Philadelphia, and an MFA in ceramics at UNT in Denton. Um, both. Uh, both Xavier and Tabitha live and work in Dallas. And um, there is a third member of the collective. Shall I go ahead yeah, and introduce her? Um, uh, the third member of Empire of Dirt, unfortunately, couldn't be with us today. Uh, Gata Voladora, um, also known as Olga Maldonado, uh, was born in Caracas, Venezuela, and is of Colombian descent. She currently lives and works in Mexico City trained in classical ballet, contemporary dance at the Universidad Nacional Experimental de las Artes Caracas, and aerial acrobat acrobatics with a circus guild, uh, also in Caracas. Her practice encompasses choreography, dance, and performance. In 2019, she participated as a performer um, in the international meeting of the Performance Hemispheric Institute of performance and politics in, at NYU in Mexico City with the piece El Bezo Ideologico by Deborah Castillo. So Xavier and Tabitha, welcome on this last weekend, sadly, yeah. Thank of you. your exhibition. Um, and just to get us started, could you talk a little bit about the origins for this project and of the collective? Hmm. Well, I guess this all started kind of at the end of 2021. I worked with Tabitha on a previous piece, and you know, I had never done anything in clay, really. Uh, maybe a few small individual objects, but with the access to uh, this kind of space, it it opened up my perspective on how artists could work together. Um, so then I think it was 2021, I was you know, sitting around trying to figure out what exhibition I wanted to do and I wanted to do something that kind of encompassed the, the scope of what I felt like I was going through. Uh, in my personal life, there was a lot of people passing uh, and you know, 2021, the world was still reeling from COVID. Uh, so to honor that, I wanted to bring in the people that kind of helped me through that process. 
uh, into the work. Uh, started talking with Tabitha about these ceramic bonsai that I, I thought about um, and what that form could be. And at the same time, I was having a conversation around performance with Gata uh, around you know suspension and the levels of, of uh, elevation that can happen in the body uh, with that practice and you know from there empire of dirt was formed i guess the first big conversation we had on it was during zona maca that year there's a, a little pick I, I make these little memes to kind of commemorate you know all the the bits and pieces of it but the first image in this slide is our introduction to Ceramica Suro, where the bulk of the ceramic pieces were made. Um, and then from there, you know, that's where we... What is it that, I mean, and maybe starting with Tabitha, what is, what is it that really drew you to working in ceramics? I mean, you've been working in that <laughs> form for a really long time, and Xavier's new to it, but it's really kind of the foundation of the exhibition. Yeah. Um, well, personally, I, I've only, it's only been um, 16 years that I've been working in service. Oh, I, only. I started, well, well, my BFA was uh, sort of uh, extended, but, but in the beginning I was sort of a photographer and so mm -hmm. um, process oriented. But uh, I think that for me, like clay is just this, uh, it is a capturing a, a moment in time. It's, it's kind of like, this thing that is soft and then now we archive it. Um, but it's also this connection to the earth and to um, just, I think I've always been playing with dirt. <laughs> um, but also this, this, this communal thing, like every, every clay space you have to have one another. There's no one person at any clay space because you need the, the labor and, and the facilities. So I think that's another thing is like, I am through and through, I always just want a community wherever I go and I seek it out and I think that clay is like, that, that's just the best, best place to, to find mm -hmm. it. And, um, and I think someone like Xavier kind of seeking me out for the skill set. I mean, is it putting you on the spot to name all the schools in the greater North, all the institutions that you've worked at in the greater North Texas area? Because I can't think of any other artists that's had that kind of traveling access and people that have had access to you as, a, as an educator, as someone that's like informing on what this thing is. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, just... Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't travel to Fort Worth too much, yeah. but a little bit of Tarrant County. But um, yeah, like I guess what I would say is is my my resources are um, students. I have tons of students, and they're they're everywhere, and and that's kind of a that's kind of a beautiful thing because I consider myself to be, you know, an educator, but always a student. So you know, they're teaching me as much as I'm teaching them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also like the metaphorical, like, you know, we're, we're made in the clay of the earth to, you know, be on this planet and we crumble back into it. And it's malleable and we yeah. are malleable and we can change, like, you know, uh, yeah, I could just step out of photography <laughs> and just uh, get, well, what I call everybody who, who's in my classes knows the, the mud bug where you're addicted and then you just can't get enough and then you're just like, okay, this is the tunnel vision, you know, and I think Clay definitely does that. Well, it's, it's interesting that there is also such a, a kind of dramatic risk of failure or in yeah. terms of breakage, which I think we also talked about um, a lot when we were trying mm -hmm. to get objects from yeah. Mexico up to Dallas. Yeah, that was a um, yeah, trip. But, but, but <laughs> we, we might be getting ahead of ourselves. Do you, do you want to talk about, and, and there are photos cycling through here of your experience um, in Mexico working on, working on these ceramics and, and what are the, the sort of 
core of, of the bonsai sculptures. Yeah, and the, uh, the tapestries as well. There's the hmm. proto pieces for that. These are the tools that we use. Uh, more or less, that's one of the first tapestry pieces laid out. I think that one didn't make it out of Mexico, or that one. Um, How long were you in Mexico? Me? Uh, I left here in June of 2021, and I came back, I think, briefly in 2022 for the art fair, and then left again in May, and then we started making in May 2022. You, Xavier was basically like 90 days or 100 days or something at the factory. I was only there for 30 days because mm -hmm. he had more flexibility with his yeah. mm -hmm. job. <laughs> um, so and we, can, I mean, we can see from some of these images, I mean, these were massive yeah, uh, yeah. ceramics you all were, were making. I mean, how, how were they just kind of physically handled or how did you, did you have drawings of what kind of forms you wanted to get to or? Um, well, so I think one of the reasons that Xavier was probably attracted to me, those forms, uh, the bonsai relating to the forms that I sort of make in general are these things that are sort of amorphous and refer mm -hmm. to like a body or a, a landscape or something. And so they kind of, the, the process kind of lends itself to that um, when you're building. And so never really, I've, like I said, I've never drawn a thing and then made it out of clay. Mm -hmm. So we had ideas like, you know, we have like our inspiration and stuff, um, but there's never like, we're gonna make this. Um, and there was so many complications at the factory when they would be like, yeah, we can help you out with a mold or, or something. And then it would be like, don't ha have any expectations. Like we had to just completely lower those and then just be kind of in charge of everything ourselves. So it was freeing for me in that way that, you know, a lot of the works that I'd been known for have been, uh, paper works, print things, text things, things that have a, a much more rigid format. So uh, the organic nature of the clay was just like mm -hmm. yeah. something that it, not regressive, but um, something that lended itself to this kind of idea of sprouting and uh, a growth that was that was bodily, like the forms kind of, yeah. the volumes uh, give off. Yeah, and physically they like transform because of however they're being built, like you just have mm -hmm. to go with it because uh, yeah, certain things, you know, Emotions. that was a firing issue with the factory. So that was um, not something from, from the construction. Just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so they would kind of, I, like they kind of tell you what they're going to do. And so, um, yeah, if there's a big crack or something that's, that's happening, mm -hmm. it's like, all right, we got to shift gears. We need to be just I mean, as the, malleable as the clay. The physicality goes back into the performance aspects of it for me, as well as Gata, I would say. Yeah. That they're engaging with that, that, that material is one of just like all encompassing uh, self to like insert into or you know form this thing where previously I'd only really thought of ceramics as you know the functional aspects of it mm -hmm. and it transcended that functional aspect of it when uh, when making these at least for me you know yeah. And physically like needing to go to the doctor because <laughs> <laughs> acupuncture because of just the scale of these things. Yeah, I'm like arthritic <laughs> now from so much pinching and scraping. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. Like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, how was the the sort of paint or I mean, is that fired into the clay? But there's sort of black markings on some of the yeah. pots that we. So because of the nature of firing and all of the finishing um, and then the um, the factory mm -hmm. just not having exactly what I you know want um, mm -hmm. 
We finished them partially. Um, so there is some slip and a little bit of glaze on two of the pieces. And then the rest of them are fired to like a mid-range temperature where then they were strong enough to come back. And then that was um, a variety of spray paint and ink, uh, uh, acrylic paint, yeah, flocking. Uh, mud glue. Yeah, adhesive things. Um, but yeah, what I call cold finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. And um, you know, I, I guess I should add um, one aspect of this project that has not yet happened. You were talking about the performative, the yeah. performance aspect. So it's, in that sense, to be continued. I mean, that's why the collective lives on, you know, and we. <laughs> It's a framework for making more things. For me, a lot of it is building the, contributing to the artists that I want to show with, you know, as they grow, you know. I don't want it to be as much of an arbitrary thing in how I navigate what I do or to have my work placed uncritically alongside something else. Uh, for a sales opportunity, I'd rather engage in a way that is, you know, thought-provoking for me and the people that I'm working with, where we can bounce ideas off each other and we can kind of engage in a way that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that uh, we're kind of talking about we, a planned performance with our third member that um, is not here. And I think that that was part of the making. Like, we were considering that the whole time. And so, this is great that we get to do this, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the the project felt a little bit. It feels like there's a little bit of a, a dot dot dot, like because mm -hmm. um, we we did plan it in the space and everything like that. But I think that the the collective itself lends itself to just that it's always ongoing and um, like it is just however the work needs to get done, it'll get done. Like. If we got to find another person to be part of it, you know, and just like that, the art that, is the most important thing. A, a big part of it is breaking that mystery of like what this material is. You know, you get a plate, you get a tile in your bathroom, you get these things, and you're like, oh, you know, this is this is the finished product. But the steps to go through to achieve that individual unit of whatever, you know. That's, that was my idea in the conception of the, of the performance, something to kind of demystify what that process is like in a live space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think that the, the, um, well, what can I say? The, the mass of objects in the space um, are not only objects there's so many there's so much like sentimentality and memento and and thing like that things like that to to both of our work that it i think it only makes sense to bring more uh individual experiences into you know that mm -hmm. collective mm -hmm. one i mean it's the density of the name it's an invocation of this yeah. cosmic body that I mean, stretches way past anything we could see um we can only give like little hints into what it is for us, but that connects to so many different people. Just yeah. in mm -hmm. historically, the stories that we tell each other, the kind of interconnected cultural histories that we come from, all that is embedded in, you know, looking up at the sky at night or sitting around a fire or sharing a meal or mm -hmm. doing those really human things that or no recognizing existence. an object that, like, because there's some, been some stories of people who, like, oh, I had <laughs> yeah. this thing and I saw that, you know, this piece of paper or whatever, and like, mm -hmm. so it's this, you know, sort of um, big loop that's fun. Well, and, and thinking about the broader themes of the sh of the show and the invocation of the cosmic body, I mean, Xavier, it. it you, you said a few minutes ago that some of your ideas or some of your concept that led you to want to work with ceramics in this particular case 
um, that you had an idea about working with bonsai, mm, yeah. or or that that was a point of inspiration. Could you could you talk a little bit about your attraction to that, or and how it I, how it feeds into? I think since I was a little kid, I had like a, a small green thumb and. The idea of having a tree inside my house that wasn't like a monstera or something like a banana tree or something that was like like an oak that I could have indoors that wasn't just like growing through my house was really a big thing for me and and growing with that uh, you know looking at the ideas of scale. Um, and the containers for different uh, different potted plants, uh, this idea of the vessel and us existing as a cultural vessel, and it all kind of spun around this fruiting nature that happens inside of a tree, you know, the world tree that exists throughout uh, a lot of different cultures, tree of life, all of that kind of kept coming back to this idea of the bonsai. Um, for me, that has a number of different connecting points that exist outside of that cultural phenomenon, like the, the bonsai itself being something, you know, originally Chinese going to Japan. And, uh, you know, our Western ideas of topiary and the pastoral existing inside of that same continuum uh, being something that informed on this. Uh, I wanted to take my spin on it as uh, the, the rock and the stone inside of that environment and then whatever else kind of growing out of that earthen space, which is the ceramic space, mm -hmm. fruiting into these, uh, these bonsai, uh, whether they, I think they, I still call them trees, but you know, they're so abstracted now that it's like, what is? Mm -hmm. Well, I think to call it bonsai fun? is the nature of bonsai being this kind of, um, well, it's, it's controlling nature, right? Mm -hmm. You know, where, where you're yeah. twining an actual branch that wants to go one way and we're, you know, mm -hmm. we're trying to control this. We're creating our own little, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's to, you know uh, terrarium kind of thing mm -hmm. where you're like, okay, this is a thing that I can have c control of. And I feel like the ceramics do relate to it that way. Like, okay, here's my mm -hmm. little safe space I'm creating and I can pretend that, you know, mm -hmm. this is it. And so those do feel like not trees, but bonsai mm -hmm. because they are this like amalgamation of, of, of this collected stuff that's been yeah. forced together and... and uh, well, they're, they're, yeah. they're deeply natural but also very artificial yeah which is even down to the materials that yeah. are, are have been brought in I mean I I have to confess you know I saw some of the images of the ceramics originally that you were you know the ones when you were making them in Mexico and how they were turning mm -hmm. out and I, I was so excited about them I thought they looked so great and I was you started talking to me about bonsai and doing stuff and I thought Oh, don't mess them up. <laughs> Which, I passed through the art show. And I was like, these forms are really yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're they're family. They're yeah. family. But um, but no, they make perfect sense now. But I I really am fascinated by the way these these big ceramic forms they 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 disappear a little bit, mm -hmm. but they also reemerge. I mean, visually, but they've they've become like this site. I mean, the way that trees are want to do for all kinds of other yeah. inhabitants, some of which are also, you know, fake leaves or fake flowers. Yeah. And with and with the real stuff. And I mean, how did how did that process work in terms of thinking about what you wanted these what else was going to happen to these big ceramic vessels or objects? I mean, I think we knew when we were in Mexico, we went to a lot of the like flea markets and stuff and just because it, it was going to be cheaper to buy things, not we thinking about the shipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we both collect things all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we did have this vision of like um, color and, and kind of mass um, and soft 
soft sculptural things next to mm -hmm. hard and precarity and and yeah like, like um yeah. whenever i mean i think in in my ceramic work i'm always like okay let's just cantilever it on the side here and see if it <laughs> doesn't fall over and you know so it's like yeah, i think we both extreme extreme part points of balance yeah that like tension like, uh, mm -hmm. um so i think that then along with that is just our kind of like wanting to be playful. Like it was kind of just fun sometimes to yeah. just be like, you know, you just find some weird stuff and like, oh, this would be perfect. I, <laughs> I have all these, you know, uh, things that are all the same size that I've collected that are weirdly plastic and the same shape and color. Mm -hmm. Now they have a place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, dissecting yeah. and, you know, that wrapping that yeah. kind of wiring things together and just making it make sense as it goes and you know at points letting that not make any more sense and you know going from whatever the next thing is to to the following moment and that was a lot of the, yeah. the process <laughs> up to the up to the day of you know yeah. where all the kind of intention placed in the works i still have things i wanted to finish in there in the construction <laughs> space, like we, we never you gotta, saw you gotta, you gotta them day. fully <laughs> erected until we were inside of the space. Like our yeah. our making space didn't allow for that. So to to really give it to that that open ended cosmic thing of like oh what is on the other side of this yeah. moment is mm -hmm. is. Not knowing yeah, what it's going to look like. like right. It's kind of right. funny you say, oh, I, w I was thinking, oh, don't, like, leave them alone. And, yeah, I deal with that, I think, every time that, yeah. you know, I make a thing and, like, what is the mark going right. to do? And, um, but, yeah, then talk about stress. Like, oh, now we have no idea what this thing's going to look like until we're actually in the gallery and mm -hmm. putting it together. <laughs> I mean, we even push that exchange in the tapestries, too, where yeah. this kind of exchange of materials mm -hmm. from each other's lives, you know, brought another piece into, the, to the, into that element of, of what the, mm -hmm. the exhibition gives off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, the work that um, you showed in Nash Your Window is also a tapestry, but could you talk a little about these tapestries, and you, you already mentioned a little bit that you were, you were actually working on them in Mexico, kind of concurrent with the ceramics? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I collect paper goods, and kind of tracking whatever I've been doing to, it's like a relic of, you know, a familial process of, you know, accounting. My mom was in sales and, you know, every year we'd get out the big box of receipts, put everything <laughs> in its category and then, you know, do the taxes and all that process kind of stuck with me. And across different artists, that aspect of their work has stuck with me. I mean, you can point out Mark Bradford, you can look at... Uh, I'm blanking on his name, David Hammonds, and this idea of the indexical trace of what things kind of from our bodies and from our lives and part onto the the medium that we're we're using. Um, I think you have a similar thing going on with objects where um, they kind of mass and you know like a rainy day fund or a library or archive of like different yeah. materials that exist inside of that. Or space. they're given, to, they come to me. Or given to Or people mom. are like, I found this and, and I know you. It's, yeah. it's you. It's you. So mm -hmm. it's, there's all those things too. Yeah, I reached across to God to ask her for different things. Like I do a lot of prompting in this uh, process of like, oh, you know, I'll have a idea and I'll propose it to the group and you're like, okay, we'll maybe work inside of this framework for a little while to, to generate a mass of material and then from that material creating the tapestries. Um, it's funny, I have a, there's an exhibition running right now at the Creative Arts Center of smaller pieces that I was making while making this piece and seeing the differences in them. Uh, 
you know. The scale, yes. The scale, <laughs> but something that, that was told to me that they all kind of exist on this grid. You know, they have that underlying structure of them that takes it into a place of tapestry rather than just collage that has more of a freeform nature to it. Um, they're patchwork, they're patched yeah. together, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna pause for just a moment. If, for a couple of people who have come in late, there are some seats in the, closer to the front. Go ahead and come on down if you'd like. Um, mm -hmm. so. Oh, but yeah, so how these ones are different. I think, you know. And it may be that they're not. I, I don't, yeah, I don't <laughs> think they are too much. Yeah. It, it is a, a welcoming into that, mm -hmm. that foundation that I have, you know, and sharing something of what I, mm -hmm. I make with the people you know, around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To push it, to yeah. push it into, you know, mm -hmm. there are some materials on there I would, I, I've used, I, I wouldn't use tape in that way, but now it's like something that's informed me on what I would do, or, mm -hmm. oh, I wouldn't use these stickers in that way, or, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't think that, you know, this plastic element would come into it, but now it's in there, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And then the other elements in the exhibition on either side of the freestanding wall are these tiles. Mm, mm -hmm. And those, I think, came toward the end or later. Or maybe you already had the tiles. I think maybe I just did there. So the, the, the factory <laughs> is a tile factory. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. So to propose a show, you might make tiles. <laughs> but no. Yeah, I thought, oh, these kilns are so big. We'll make these big sculptures and it'll be great. Um, but the tile, it was, it was uh, seamless. Every time we made tiles, that was easy. <laughs> so they sent us, they gave us uh, greenware tiles, not fired, uh, and, you know, perf industrial standard, everything. And then the ones that are in there uh, were just black slip. And then I just used a Scraffito tool and did drawings. Xavier had made white and, and gold ones that we didn't get, you know, just time and so much mm -hmm. stuff. Um, that we didn't get in there, but um, I think that those were in originally those were intended to be um, this like backing for the pieces that are hanging on the wall. And if, if you haven't seen the show, you'll mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. um, that that we imagined would be like this faux tile facade behind the the hanging sculptures that potentially you can put your head inside. Um, and so then when that became just too much work, uh, we just decided we were going to make, uh, just like some sort of just visual, uh, pieces for the wall. And so mm -hmm. that's, those ones came out to be the most cohesive. So we just felt like, yeah, yeah the, the two wall mounted sculptures are crazy yeah. they're in, in a good way yeah <laughs> that's um, the craziest thing i ever did yeah, yeah. how did how did the um and they have sound elements mm -hmm. and how did that how did that come into play uh the sounds were recorded i guess over the scope of the making of the entire thing too i i left mexico in uh, september uh, to go to Vietnam uh, for some personal stuff and record a lot of audio there. Um, part of that audio makes it into the track. It's like a, you know, a morning sound, morning sound, naturey kind of soundscape that I think, you know, with an under. I think there's also cicadas in there, so stuff that yeah. are familial, f familiar enough to like spur some kind of you know, emotion or like headspace within the viewer, especially since you're putting your head inside of these sculptures to like give you a, a turn on to, you know, thinking about what, what space you're inside of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that process of hanging a, a sculpture of that size I had never done and mm -hmm. was uh, real scared about. <laughs> Um, so uh, we commissioned a, a welder to, to weld those cleats and everything, and uh, 
And I love when, when we were installing and Jed said, so what do you think, Tabitha? How do you feel? I was like, I don't know. Hopefully we come back tomorrow and it's up there. <laughs> like, I've never done this before, so. Um, but it was. And it has been. Yeah, yeah. So every time I come in, every time I come in, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, but um, that I am really, really pleased with how those mm -hmm. came out. I think that those are my favorite. Hat. Those are uh, probably my favorite. They were the nicest, oh, some of the nicest forms to make too, and mm -hmm. the most striking forms for people to see inside the factory. Mm -hmm. I think there's a few pictures of like various artists, one of who's showing right now, 1226, mm -hmm. uh, Ulala, um, oh, yeah. who, you know, Inside of that space, it, it, how, how so I guess what I would say is they were very impressed with us at the factory because nobody at the factory real, that was like the artists people, they kind of went as like a vacation, I think. Mm -hmm. And so it was almost as if that wasn't their primary um, medium. Mm. So then they would come over to the space and be like, whoa, how did you make this? Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what do they do to get here? Like, you know? <laughs> but so they were like, whoa, no one's ever made like this kind of big stuff. Um, so we had a few, a few people that were like working at the same time as us that were making mm -hmm. some things. And we were amongst them. Ulala being one that what is a ceramic maker of sorts. Um, and and so she was one who was getting like these big basins made and then she would fill them with these figures mm -hmm. um but everything else was sort of a small scale seemed like when they at the yeah. at the factory mm -hmm. i forgot where i, was I don't remember what the yeah. question was <laughs> <laughs> well i think is there any anything else you thought you might like to discuss or bring up? Uh, well, I mean, I think that it, I, I think this, it's great in the space and I hope mm -hmm. that everyone, if you haven't seen it, uh, when you see it, you can mm -hmm. really like kind of feel like that nature of the, the images where, you know, you're in this forest or whatever and okay. kind of feel this, uh, the scale of, of mm -hmm. the work and and some sort of personal connectivity to it. And I think, I think it works in that space and it's, it's everything mm -hmm. that you know, I could have hoped for. So. I think as we continue to grow and like make as a collective, the, the borderlessness of this process kind of is yeah. further, uh, you know, not shown, but expressed then that the audacity of trying to bring uh, Venezuelan national to the United <laughs> States as a part of this after project. After the president was just after switched president over. Change. Yeah. yeah. The, the boundaries that get pushed inside of, of making a work and proposing a work that, you know, yeah. the grounding of it is all in our personal history. It's empowering, I think yeah. it makes you yeah. feel capable. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There can be a little, a little more of that, hopefully, just like, do the continuation of this, this work and you know, whatever else we make next. So. Yeah. yeah. I guess this stays, it's kind of partially stay tuned for whatever our next <laughs> <laughs> exhibition is. And, uh, yeah, definitely more to come. Yeah. Right. Well, are there, um, before we try to see how many of us we can fit in the gallery. Um, are, there, are there any questions in here? Yeah. yeah. And, and then I'll, since, I'll just repeat your question so we have them on mic, if that's okay. <laughs> uh, I, I love the notion of, of play in art, uh, particularly how it lets you explore things that you, that you couldn't in a more serious way. Yeah. Uh, could you elaborate on that a little bit? How do you yeah. see it? So Me the, personally? Yeah. yeah. The, so the question was just about play and the role that that plays, plays, mm -hmm. how, what play plays in your work? Um, well, for me, it is really the, the, the point where um, 
the art starts. Because <laughs> uh, I think for every artist, it's kind of like, um, just get in the studio, get in there even if you're cleaning, you're in there, you're working, you're doing something. And then when you start to get a little distraction, that distraction then leads to some other little thing, and then that next thing, and then it's five hours have gone by and you're like, oh, wow, I, I didn't know I could use tape this way, or I could do whatever, you know, and now it's, now it's so much more than play. Um, and then it's actually a thing. The other, the other thing I'll say is uh, I encourage that with students too because there's so much pressure when you don't know, when you're not technically capable of working with a medium yet, you know, and you're like, there's so much tension and you're like, I can't do it, I can't do it. But if you just, once you let go and you're like, oh, I'm having fun, that's when like the real, um, the intuition of, of the work, I think, then when that comes out. I, mean, I see play a lot as being like the serious nature of pleasure, you know, you have to get through that first part to get to the enjoyment of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yes. This isn't as much a question as kind of a commentary. Um, we've been really fortunate from getting to know Tabitha initially, I guess I realized her as a teacher, but Tabitha and then meeting her, coming to the studio, subsequently getting to meet Xavier and, and being introduced to his work and just hearing about this project when it was just a concept and you know, following along with their journey, they've been so open and generous, um, <laughs> allowing us as um, visitors to the process and it, just watching it unfold and hearing, you know, get, getting to meet with them in their studio, on their space, and surrounded by, you know, what were blank ceramic canvases, and then to see them here is really moving and, you know, beyond our wildest dreams, and hopefully yeah. y'all's too, but it's just the, the whole collaboration and sharing of their process and their passion has just been really exciting and, and uh, unique. Thank you, Sherry. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Yes, Michael. Hi. Um, on the tiles, the, uh, the wall tiles, can you tell me a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about the origin of the graphics of the imagery? Um, well, for my work, uh, just in general, through two, two dimensions and, and three dimensions, I kind of uh, make up a little bit of a language um, with, with, I really <laughs> like lines and circles and stuff. And so, um, and actually, I, I look at a lot of uh, 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 Taoist um, um, imagery where there's you know a little story with a pictogram, and then I I like to think of you know uh, like circles as like um, cycles and lines as paths, and so uh, sometimes it's it's just that kind of intuition, uh, like that I intuitive kind of drawing, um, and so I just that would just be kind of like my my regular sketching and then the 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 tiles allowed a really fun way to make for those of you who haven't if you when you make a line in slip it is it's raised from the surface it's not like a, a a pen on paper and so it's just like a different line quality and so it was really great to get to have those all spread out at once and just like kind of I, I think it was maybe only took 40 minutes or something to make all of those, just do all the drawings. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of a playful and liberating process, but also there's just this kind of intuitive. Just follow up, how does that relate to the title of those um, file pieces? The, t the title? Yeah. There's yeah. table. Setting the table one and two. Setting the table one and two, yeah. So originally, I had thought that it would be fun to make a tile table for the wares that we will, you know, a little bit about. We were trying to make a dinner um, associated with this. Um, and so I had been thinking about them as a tabletop. And then um, I just 
then when they were there in the square, it was just kind of reminding me of like a TV table, like a dinner, you know, there's like little TV trays yeah. and it would be just like, you know. I mean, the little cardboard. And then board. the cardboard border. <laughs> yeah. I like the, yeah. I, I always think of it in the way that I was kind of instructed on drawing, that the mark making being the, the thing that creates the drawing. So, you know, all the different marks Mm -hmm. are falling into that space of language and, mm -hmm. and showing the kind of range or, you know, whatever that exists inside of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 